If I had a nickel for every time I found out about a game by random chance that happens to be a sequel to a game I've never heard of, gave it a try and instantly fell in love, I would have gained two nickels this month. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened two weeks in a row. This week, the game I discovered by seeing a couple random tweets, is Everspace 2, a spaceship-based third-person RPG shooter masquerading as a space sim. It had my undivided interest within seconds, but I didn't have an extra 50 bucks to throw at it. But then I discovered it's on Game Pass. When I saw that, I hit that download button so fast I broke the sound barrier. Unlike other spaceship games I've tried, this one actually manages to hold my attention. I have a severe case of magpie goblin brain, so looter shooters have this weird pull on my psyche, similar to how I get addicted to cookie clicker every so often. Therefore, the draw of a looter shooter plus it being in my favorite game setting and having an actual main story means I will be stuck on this game for the next six months. The story so far is that you're some sort of combat clone working for a mining company, and through some bad luck during the tutorial section, you're captured by space pirates. That doesn't last long though, as you pretty much immediately break out, but your partner is gravely injured and your main motivation is to get him medical help so he doesn't die. The story cutscenes are some of the coolest and also the silliest things ever. They're beautifully hand drawn, almost like comic panels, but have the most overly dramatic dialogue that's kinda all over the place. The writing is probably not the strongest part of the game. The characters' thoughts and actions seem to switch on a dime at times. Wait. Not leaving without my friend. Don't be an idiot. He's a dead man. Okay, get your friend. <laughs> That's a one hell of a 180 right there. Within the first five-ish minutes, I knew I was gonna love this game. The ship designs right off the bat tickle the part of my brain that grew up on Star Wars, but are still unique. What is that, a TIE Defender? The flight mechanics are nothing short of amazing, with a full range of motion to keep my stupid ass bumping into wall after wall. Oh, shit. Oops. I have this issue where I insist on using a mouse and keyboard for every game I play, unless it's VR of course, and my first couple play sessions were actually done with a mouse and keyboard combo. But then I remembered, I own a flight stick. I bought it a couple years back to try to play Elite Dangerous, but because I just got bored of it, this HOTUS I have is just collecting dust. So I dug it out of storage and set up the controls. Yeah, this probably isn't earth shattering news, but using a flight stick for a spaceship based game changes the gameplay from great to amazing. It did make the game a lot harder for me though, because since I so rarely use the sick, I'm not very good with it. So I died a lot. What? This fight is way unfair. Yeah, <laughs> that's a bit too high level for me. <laughs> Whoops. By the way, fuck these ships. These things are a type of ship not even a mother could love. Despite my hatred of the madcaps, the combat is so satisfying, I'm honestly kinda sad I'll never have the chance to fight and die in an actual sci-fi space battle. It's fast paced, punchy, and deadly. I'm only at level 4, but I'm already one-shotting the basic scout enemies with the ruthless efficiency of a Top Gun pilot. And you know I have to talk about the sound design as well. The in-game music is expectedly amazing. I don't know what it is about the space genres that make composers go so hard, but I welcome it. Interestingly enough, a good chunk of the music reminds me a lot of Subnautica's music with its dark but ethereal tone. The sound effects are amazing too. The weapons are all pure auditory ecstasy, and the ambiance is staggering.
There's plenty to do in the game with main and side quests, random encounters, secrets and puzzles and vast environments hiding all sorts of goodies, combat challenges, pretty much anything you want in a space exploration shooter. There's even an economy system, so if you wanted to, you could just run goods back and forth to make bank, but it's just more fun to fight outlaws. It's important to collect money and items when you can, because not only is there a full crafting system, there's an unholy amount of customization options for your ship to be found. It's so great that this game came out, because I've been itching for a new space game to play now that I've officially squeezed all the fun I can from Stellaris. If I forget to upload videos for the next 5 weeks, it's because I'm playing this game. Nah, I'm kidding, I love making these videos, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. As much as I would like to stream this game, I'm having so many issues getting my PC and internet to cooperate that streaming probably won't be happening for another couple months. On the bright side though, I'll be trying to do at least two videos a week where one is this sort of review style, and the others will probably be more casual, longer game playthroughs, or even something else. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video brought you some sort of either entertainment or information, and if it did, maybe stick around. You might like what you see. There's also a Discord server where all we really do is collect virtual trading cards and shout at each other over some claim steal or something dumb, but it's fun, and that's also where most of my announcements take place. Anyway, I've kept you here long enough. I hope to see you again in the future, but until then, take care, and have a wonderful day.